Okay, welcome uh, back everybody. Uh, this is the pangolin session of the CS3 because I'm, uh, I'm replacing a COVID sick person and uh, yeah, I'll do my best to, to chair this session. Uh, let's start so that we have three 20 minute presentations starting with Francois Berenger, uh, Francois Berenger's son, the most Japanese among all the French, or the most French among all the Japanese, will speak about deep smiles and molecular generation by Festens assembly. Here we go, 20 minutes. Thank you, Dragos. So, uh, I I'm, will be talking, so first I thank the organizers for this uh, wonderful event, like every time. And uh, I will talk about a molecular generator, which generates uh, only uh, valence valid molecules uh, at very high frequency, and that can still do uh, training set uh, distribution reproduction. So my talk will follow this uh, plan. So I will introduce molecular generation. I will talk about the SMILES uh, chemical file format. I will talk about uh, deep smiles, which are a simpler syntax for smiles. Uh, I will int introduce a recurrent neural network a molecular generator because I, I compare against it. And uh, I will explain how I generate uh, molecules with a FASMIFRA software. And I will show some results finally. So first about uh, molecular generation. So uh, here we have a caffeine molecule. Uh, I will show smiles for it after. And uh, if you want to generate uh, optimized molecules on a computer, so uh, you might combine uh, those four things. So there is a molecular generator, which is the, the goal of this talk. You need uh, at least one scoring function. Um, you, you should better use an applicability domain for that scoring function. And of course, you also need an optimization algorithm. So uh, about smiles, so here you have uh, still the caffeine molecule and under it you have the SMILE string for it. And uh, SMILES means a simplified molecular input line entry system published by uh, David Weininger in 1998. Um, so a SMILES is a linear encoding of the molecular graph. And uh, I don't know if it's the most useful uh, chemical file format, but I think it's my preferred uh, chemical file format. And uh, it's not unique. So for one chemical graph, you can have uh, many smiles which are encoding this graph. And uh, this can be exploited for uh, data augmentation for some machine learning techniques. So smiles are a pretty compact format. It compresses well because it's text. And uh, it's human readable, but for really small molecules. So even this caffeine is maybe a little bit too big to be human readable, I feel. So uh, recently, there was a SMILES variant, so a simpler syntax to, to help uh, deep learning models which generate molecules. So um, here you still see our caffeine molecule with the SMILES under it. And also there is uh, the corresponding deep SMILES using the no ring opening uh, variant of deep SMILES. So uh, the regular SMILES or the classic SMILES they are difficult to generate correctly by computers. And uh, if you work with smiles, I advise you, you read the specification at Open Smiles. It's not too boring, it's readable, and you will really understand uh, what is this format and how it works. And so uh, recently, so there is a Noel O'Boyle and uh, Andrew Delk, they created this uh, deep smiles uh, syntax and uh, yeah, to help uh, deep learning models probably. And uh, so you can have several possible flavors of deep smiles. So either you want uh, no ring opening and or you want uh, no branch opening. So uh, this is a ring opening number, this one. This is another ring opening number. This is a cl ring closing number for the first ring we have opened. And this is a ring closing number for the second ring we have opened. So those are ring opening, ring closing numbers. And for the branch, so the branches are the parentheses. So this is a smile branch opening, smile branch closing, etc. 
So this is a model uh, which I compare to because it generates molecules uh, pretty fast for a, for a deep learning method. So it's a recurrent neural network published by uh, Arus Pus in 2019. So uh, you see this architecture as uh, some parameters. So there is the input layer dimension, output layer dimension, then there is a dropout parameter, which is uh, some regularization parameter of the model. Then there is a number of uh, hidden layers. So you see there are quite a few parameters. And to train such architectures, you need a lot of molecular data. So, okay. So for uh, my way of generating molecules, which I call the fast assembly of smiles fragments. So first you need to type atoms. So here I show an example uh, uh, atom typing scheme. So you can encode an atom on a computer as a tuple, let's say with uh, four members. So this one is uh, it's inspired by the atom pairs atom typing scheme. So you can, for example, you have a, so this is an atom of our molecule. Uh, we count the number of uh, pi electrons. We record the atomic number of this, uh, this atom. We count the number of uh, bonded heavy atom neighbors and also the formal charge. So there are many possible atom typing schemes in the literature and uh, you can use the one from your favorite uh, force field. I think it, it will be okay. So then since we can type atoms, we can also type uh, bonds uh, more precisely than just with a bond order. So let's say this is a bond of our molecule. So we can say the type of the bond, let's say a precise type, would be uh, the type of the first connected atom, then the bond order of this bond, and then the type of the next atom connected to this bond. Okay, so I said everything. And uh, so once you, you can type bond, but also uh, if you fragment molecules, uh, you don't need to cut the molecule. You can just, uh, in the smile string for this molecule, you can annotate which bonds have been cut. And uh, okay, the method I propose is not, uh, it's not fixed to any uh, fragmenting scheme of molecules. You, it's parameterized by a molecular fragmenting scheme, so you can use the one you like. Just you need to write the fragmented molecules in the syntax that we support so that we can generate molecules from your fragmented molecular data set. So this is an example. So let's say this is one of our training set molecules here. So we fragmented it in three fragments. So this one in the core, I will call it the seed fragment. And this one as so the branch fragment one and branch fragment two. And under, I have written a smile string where you see each fragment. So the seed fragment is in green. So you see in the smile, everything that is green is about this, uh, this fragment. Uh, branch fragment one is in orange. So this part and the branch fragment two is in uh, purple. So this part over there and under the smiles with uh, annotated uh, cleaved bond, you have the deep smiles for it. So it's a little bit shorter maybe because there are less characters. And uh, the important thing is that when you fragment the molecule, so for our method, you have to record and remember, so which atom type was connected with which atom type, because this, is, this will constrain the generation of molecules. So this is the fragment assembling algorithm we have. So the one, one of the three properties we have is we generate only uh, valence correct molecules. So we never generate invalid smiles or deep smiles. So to generate a molecule, you do a uniform random draw of a seed fragment. And then you attach compatible uh, branch fragments, I call them, until you have uh, saturated all the attachment points of your seed fragment and eventually the attachment points which were added by uh, branch fragments you have added. So uh, if we use deep smiles, uh, 
all, doing all this is almost only uh, string operations. So you have an array of strings, you have a hash table of uh, branch fragments, and this hash table is indexed by the cleaved bond types. So that's why it can go pretty fast. And uh, so another property, interesting property of this molecular generator is that we can do uh, what is called a training set distribution matching. So uh, if you consider those uh, molecular properties, so a molecular weight, uh, C log P, number of aromatic rings and et cetera, whatever, whatever chemical descriptor you like about your molecules. And I show uh, the difference between the training set distribution and the generated set distribution. So if our training set is a Chinese traditional medicine database of Taiwan, then the distribution is in a dark blue. If it's a generated set from this, uh, this training set, it's in light blue. And for Campbell training set, uh, it's a red line and uh, generated from Campbell is the orange line. So you see that whatever the molecular property from the training set and the generated set, there is a very good overlap of the two distributions. And the uh, chemoinformaticians like the Tanimoto score. So I even computed the Tanimoto score between the histograms because you can all know judge how, how well is the Tanimoto score, I think. And then, uh, so the last property, so we generate molecules uh, pretty fast and we learn uh, a molecular training set uh, pretty fast also. So um, this is comparing a few methods. So this one is a recurrent neural network I have shown uh, previously. So this is model training speed. So this RNN can learn about 30 molecules per second, but it runs on a GPU. Uh, if you just fragment molecules in Python using RDKit, and you really cut the smiles into a different fragment, then you can fragment about uh, 2,800 uh, molecules per second, let's say. And if we do just do a bone tagging, which I'm using, so you annotate inside the smiles which bones were cut and the atom types involved, and then you can still visualize the smiles with a molecular viewer. So we fragment about 2,500 molecules per second on a single core of a regular CPU. And uh, model sampling is about, uh, you have a train model, and then you want to use it to generate new molecules. So I show, so the RNN, recurrent neural network, uh, still on a GPU, they can generate about 9,000 molecules per second. Um, assembling fragment and working at the molecular graph level and putting back into smiles, this is quite costly, it's quite slow. So it's about uh, 8,700 molecules per second with our FASMIFRA software. So you can generate about 300,000 molecules per second on a single core. And if you switch to deep smiles, because it's a little bit simpler syntax, you can generate even higher. So like 300,050 300, molecules per second. And uh, so if you do molecular generation, so there is a guacamole benchmark, which is interesting. So we run it and we compared against uh, other methods. So uh, if you get a one somewhere, it's the best score and zero is the worst score. So validity is about, uh, do you generate only valid molecules? Uniqueness is, uh, do you repeat yourself? And novelty is, uh, do you generate new molecules compared to the one in the training set? Uh, cool bar Leibler divergence, it's a measure of the distribution reproduction property. And FCD, I think it's about, uh, do you generate uh, likely molecules compared to uh, some zinc subset and, and Campbell also, I think. So our method is here. Uh, this is still our method, but without the, the precise bond typing. So it means you connect any fragment to any fragment. So you see it, it decreases uh, distribution matching property. Uh, this is a stupid uh, baseline method, which cannot generate new molecules. This is a deep learning method, so the least short-term memory deep neural network. This is graph uh, Monte Carlo tree search. So they are not very good in KL divergence and FCD. Uh, some other methods are pretty complex. This is also deep learning, this one. 
Um, I think Smiles LSTM is pretty balanced, so it's a good method. And then maybe the VAE also is a very good method, but they are pretty complex and they have many parameters and you need a big training set. So, uh, okay, all questions are welcome. And uh, I thank very much to Professor Koji Tsuda from uh, Tokyo University for funding this project. Uh, the software is open source. You can get it on a uh, GitHub with my funny uh, login name. And uh, the, those are 100 molecules generated by FASMIFRA using uh, Campbell 24 as our training set. Thank you for your attention. Excellent. Uh, thanks for keeping up time. And we have questions. I knew there would be a question from Tagir. That's unavoidable given the topic. Please, Tagir. Uh, first, thank you for your clear presentation. And I would guess that uh, this work is uh, actually a huge brick uh, thrown into AI uh, researchers in the chemistry because uh, the results that you show on the Moses, oh no, on Guacamole, uh, are really um, inspiring. And uh, really, you think about um, that do we need really AI right now? And if it's really good working. And, but I have only a question uh, more about technology is that first have you how you choose the seed structure and how you control the number of fragments that you generate and that's my question okay so the the seed structure is uh, chosen randomly so it's a random uniform draw from the table of all seed structures we have seen and about the fragment size uh, so I implemented a fragmenting algorithm, but it's a very uh, simple one. Uh, I cut only single bonds, not involved in stereo. And uh, so you could replace by any fragmenting scheme you like. And I think the def default fragment size is 300 uh, Dalton. So I use the molecular weight, I divide by 300 Dalton, and then I, I choose how many fragments we will have, but I don't control the, the weight of each fragment. So it's pretty coarse uh, fragmenting. Thanks for your talk. Uh, yes, uh, in fact, that was the same question about the connectivity and the seed uh, fragment. But I, I also, I also uh, have another question, which is, um, you you have mentioned that uh, you do not work directly from the canonical smiles, but but you multiply the different smiles in order to uh, to be able to generate more uh, different fragments. Uh, yes, can you? develop a little bit say why not working just with the canonical smiles but... okay because uh, okay canonical smiles would introduce a bias in the smiles that you have in your database so i don't want this bias so uh, yeah yeah you should uh, i work somewhere in the software i put that i want randomized smile strings and uh, usually the smiles randomization so it's exploited it can be exploited by a deep learning methods which need a lot of data, and when they don't have enough data, then they can use a smiles randomization to get more data to train their models. But I, I use it to remove the bias from the canonicalization algorithm, which would uh, which would make the seed fragment to be always the same or something like this. I was afraid, so I work with randomized smiles. Okay. Any more? Well. Uh... All the questions spun around the same topic. So what happens if in your training set, for example, you have a, one monster with a big ring system that will oblige you to snip off very small fragments on both sides. And that will, uh, will that uh, incite the smiles generator to, uh, to produce uh, big rings for everybody. So will in that case, will you break the the conservation of the property histogram it's, it's a difficult question but um, if there are ugly molecules in your training set of course it will influence the, the ugliness of the generated set and uh, if some molecules are only made of uh, fused rings for example then we our fragmentation scheme doesn't fragment them and the molecule can appear as is from the training set to the generated set 
and about the property matching thing. So if you have a monster molecules inside, I, I don't know what will happen in advance. Okay. Well, thank you very much.